Hello guys, so in this video I'll be walking us through what data structure are in Python. The prior video to this one is um, data types in Python. If you haven't watched it, please you know click on the link above and you know watch that video before moving on to this. However, if you have a solid understanding of how data types are in Python and how to use them. Let's advance to get into data structures in, in Python. So what are data structures in Python? Data structure in Python, just like every other language, is a way in which you know, various data types are aggregated together or like are connect, are combined or collected together to form to form you know a unit or like to a unit assignable to a variable so so there are, these are the you know core data structures that we have in python so we have the list we have the tuple tuple we have the dictionary dictionary we have the set so these are the main ones, although we have um, some things like um, frozen set here. Frozen set. And yeah, but you know, it's more like a sub. And we also have one that is unlikely, or should I say it's more like the hydrogen guy in the group that tend to include it's the string. The string falls on the, you know, the data type per se, but you know, it also has, it presents itself more like it fits into the data structure category as well. Although like, you know, it might be debatable, but you know, based on the structure or the way in which it's designed in Python, it stands like it is a data structure itself. So in this video, instead of walking us through everything inside of my terminal, I will be moving on to W3 school where we look at their definitions and I explain it inside of the terminal, you know, like more like practically to see what is happening there. So let's head on to W3 school and here we are. So W3 school calls, you know, these data structures, Python collections of Veracity on array. So says like there are four collection data types in Python programming language, which include the list, which include the list, the tuple, the set, the dictionary I mean so those are like the four primary like the four collections of data types we have in Python programming so what is a list a list a list is a collection okay of data types which is ordered and changeable it also allows duplicate members so what ordered here means is that it has a position like it's a collection that has a position Okay, this one is at position one, this one is at position two, this one is at position zero, this is at position ten, etc. Okay, so a tuple is also a collection, okay, which is ordered as well. It is ordered, however, it is unchangeable. Okay, can we see the difference between a list and a tuple now? Both list and tuples are ordered, okay, both of them allows duplicate members. However, a list is changeable while a tuple is unchangeable like you know the buzzword we use for that and you know programming is like the list is you know mutable mutable why the tuple is immutable so let's add on to the terminal and see what that means and let's get onto it so uh let's say um food items food items we have um let's say rice Okay, rice, maize, millet. Let's, let's go with hot. Let's go with barley. Okay, so let's say these are like food items. All right, so these food items is a list. And like we said, a list, okay is ordered okay it is changeable and it allows repetition 
so that means that inside of these food items we could as well have added rice again and it's still you know still food if you call out food items okay we get the response this is the response here so we have two rice we have the first one here and we have the last one right here so if we check the type just like we we'll check for a, a data type food item we get a class list so so now that that's a list a list or you should always remember this a list starts and ends with a square bracket a square bracket beginning tends with one starts with one and ends with one so that is a list however for a tuple a tuple is the curved brackets okay just like we'll have a food items like this rather a tuple will have the curved bracket okay just to call it again let's call this food items underscore tuple okay let's give it this all right then let's have um, food items underscore list and this will have the square bracket okay so if we call our food our food item underscore topple we get this and if we call our food items underscore list we get this so all right so both of them what we mean by their their order is that you can always refer to a particular position for example and one thing we should also note is that numbering or like position position of, of elements in python starts from position zero position one position two position three position four position five okay so uh, now the element at position zero in the topo is this rise all right so that's position zero so the element at position one is this the element at position two is this at position three we get this at position four we get this at position five we get this however at position six we get this it's out of index well, uh, index out of range rather so that is that is how it works so this is to tell us like you know the various positions that this stuff have. the same thing works for a a list however the difference here between a list and a tuple that we saw over here is that okay a list is changeable however a tuple is unchangeable so what that means over here is this if we go into a food items at position five okay or let's go for a list first or rest to position five if you try assigning a new value to it let's say i want to say bent okay i don't know what you may copy or whatever so um food items and the top of position five you get an error yet you can see the top of object does not support item assignment however if it were the food items list at position five you're quitting it to bins you can see we didn't get any error by the time we call we get rice maize millet oat barley and beans the rice here has been replaced so that is what you know w3 school was trying to tell us here that the list is ordered the top was also ordered however the list is changeable but the top is not changeable okay so that's one of like the classical difference between a list and a top in python so moving on to set a set is a collection okay however a set is unordered means that it has no position it's unindexed as well okay it's unindexed so no duplicate members can exist in it in a set so let's go back to a topo uh, the topo that we had earlier topo okay we have this so if we did something and say like um you know we are just call this variable y is equals to the set of this then we if we call our y we get this amazing amazing set so you discover that this list becomes 
it doesn't respect the order it had earlier you know the first item here was rice we have this as maize millet but it's just i give its own um wait like it's more like a random it's one of the characteristics of a set a set is usually you know unordered that's what makes it a set and no item is also repeated inside of it so on in the original top you can see we have rice multiple times twice more specifically but inside of the set now it eliminates the other one just a representation is required inside of a set so Yeah, that, that is set for us. So we also have the dictionary. The dictionary is also on audit. It's changeable, it's indexed, however, no duplicate members. So how dictionary functions in Python? Dictionary di dictionaries in Python. Dictionaries in Python functions more like functions more like a a key value pair, just like a, a normal dictionary would. So let's say my dict Okay, is equals to just as this um, curly bracket and let's say name. Then you follow a colon. Name is let's say Philip. Okay, age rather age ten. So if you call my date here now, you have it like that and we call the type of my dict you get a class of dictionary so that is what we have over here so these are the classical uh, data collections that we have in, in Python however there is still one guy I would like to include in this class and that is a string a string like I said earlier it might be debatable and missed, you know programmers but the way in which dictionary um, strings are designed in Python it's also false like or behaves more like a data structure more like an aggregate of you know various data types for example I see it more like an A you know for example B all of this together okay can be However, th this is a topo if you might, you know, see this is a topo here, right there. So, however, like if you want to like do this together, okay, you have AB and it appears to be like an aggregate of, you know, two data types, of which both are string and, you know, it also allows this, it also allows this um, indentation as well, okay, my ruler, for example. So like Y and position zero gives us A and position two gives us A as well and position three gives us R. So like the um, the string as well, even though it's a data type can also behave like a data structure. So it's not exactly a data structure, but it behaves exactly like one. So this is where we'll be ending this video. However, to wrap it up, there is one more thing I need to like tell us that these data structures you know they have a special kind of way in which you can manipulate them and in python they are called methods okay so in order for you to properly look at the methods that any kind of data structure has you can do that by wrapping a dir around it for example a dir around y you get to see all of these things okay so you can see things like you know capitalize case fold center count encode and switch all of these things are various you know ways and if we wrap this around the food item list for example the i heart if you wrap it around it you also uh, food items list okay so we also get to see this append clear copy count extend uh, and the likes if you wrap this around the top as well you'll get you can see you know the things that we have right here so i would encourage us to read more on what methods have in python so you check you can place to check it the string the list methods the list methods the string methods okay the dictionary methods 
you know the topple as well the topple method as well as you know the set so uh, I'm going to like leave the links to W3 school below to, um, to each of these things so I encourage you to like read it and study it so that we can learn these things learn it and analyze it so that you can use them you know flawlessly I hope to see you in the next video thank you for watching and I really appreciate your time bye